to get a volunteer from the audience. Anybody wanted to graph this? Do I have to pick a volunteer or do I get a volunteer? Yeah. Okay, Spencer, how about it? So, come on up. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. You can call a friend, too, if you want. Okay. Will, you've been nominated, too. So, we need to graph this line. I mean, we look at it. How many pieces are there? Three. Three. That's very obvious. Okay, so I need to graph one line, that first line, from negative infinity to negative one. Okay. And then the next line needs to be graphed between 0 and 3. The next line needs to be graphed between 3 and 7. Which one do you want to start with? Uh, first one. Okay, the first one. I'll need to graph x plus 5 from negative infinity to negative 1. So what's the first point you're going to pick? Uh, one. Why would you do that? Okay, well, what number? So the first line needs to be graphed from where to where? Uh, negative, negative infinity to negative 1. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, well, I could pick a negative 2, but that's fine. But what's the end point of that line? Infinity. One end is negative infinity. What's the other end point? Negative 1. Negative 1 is a good number to pick, and then another point negative one. to draw. Okay? So the first line, so this first line, if I had x and x plus 5, mm -hmm. Negative 1 is a very good number to pick because I know that the line has to stop there. Yeah. Okay. So I know negative 1, 4 is going to be what kind of circle? Open. Yeah. Negative 1, 4 is an open circle. Yeah. This is a hard crowd, guys. I know. See what I have to put up with every day? Now... I'm graphing this line from negative infinity to negative 1. What's the, what is another point to pick? Negative 2, 2. Yeah, some number between negative infinity and negative 1, preferably on that graph. So pick negative 2. And then graph that. Now, let's back up. This is a point on the line, okay? So just put a dot there. Yeah, now this line needs to go from there to there. Yeah, that's it. That's all this line is. Okay, this line, we've graphed the first line. We've graphed the first line from negative infinity to negative 1. Okay. Sometimes people ask, like, well, why don't I put an open circle there? An open circle, if I had this line, that's wrong. Okay. That means not those points, but we just needed another point on the line to graph it. Now, let's just switch colors, and let's graph the next line. So 2x minus 1. You can make yourself a chart if you need to on the right over there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, wh what two points are the most obvious points to pick here? 0 and 3. Yeah. yeah. Those are the two endpoints of the line that I'm graphing. Now you're going to plot two points, and you've got to determine if they're solid or dotted. Excuse me, solid or open circles. Uh, all right. So zero, negative one. That would be open. Yeah, hold on. You've got to. Uh, yeah, zero, negative one. No. Yeah, zero, negative one is an open circle. Does everyone see why? And then what about three, five? Where are you getting that information from? Close. Where is that information coming from? The bracket. The bracket. So oh. it's uh, telling me that 3 is included. So, oh, okay. So 3, 5. Three, five. five. Close circle. Yeah. So now connect those two. And then and just make it obvious that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now hand a pencil to Will. And Will is going to graph the next one. Okay. Negative x plus 2, and obviously on which intervals would he do that?
Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And then seven, negative five is also open. Yep. Connect the dots. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Okay, see how easy that was? Even Will and Spencer could do that. Thank you, guys. So, anyway, I appreciate it. So, okay, now, so is this a function? I'm getting like some chewy, yeah, no, yeah, what is it? It is a function. If you draw vertical lines, those vertical lines are only crossing this graph once. The places that might be in question are right here. Well, that's closed and that's open. So if I draw a vertical line, it really only crosses once. Why and then I ask, pardon me? Why do you choose negative 1 and negative 5? Um, where? Why did I choose what? You're, you're plugging 0 and 3 into these equations. You're plugging 3 and 7 into this equation. You're plugging in an x, and you're getting a y value back. Okay. Okay. So what is f of 3? Yeah, f of 3 is 5. You can tell just by looking at the graph. Or you can tell which of these intervals contains the number 3. Yeah, so plug in a 3 here. You get 6 minus 1. You get 5. So you have to know which which interval you're, the 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 point is if you're evaluating. What is f of 8? Yeah. yeah, there's no solution because if I look at the definition, I only go up between 3 and 7. I don't give you a domain. My domain does not include the value 8. So f of 8 is undefined. So. And then you need to be able to find the domain and the range. The domain is the set of all what? X values, okay? So this first graph over here is going to continue going on forever. So the domain starts over here. Do I have domain values over here? Yeah, it's, it's going on forever. So my domain is from negative infinity all the way over to something happens here. Yeah, negative 1. And then it looks like I don't start getting values again until I get to... I'm traveling on the x-axis. I'm at negative infinity, and I got to negative 1. Then I start seeing values between 0 and it looks like 3, but I keep on going, okay, until I get to 7. So the first one's from negative infinity to negative 1. So my domain, I'm just going to write it here. Negative infinity. Now, what goes around that negative 1? Parentheses, okay? So from negative infinity to negative 1, and then from 0 to what? So I go from 0 to 3, okay? Okay, so I'm right here. Are there still more values to be had? Yeah, I can keep on going to, I'll get to where? 7, okay? That is my domain, okay? Negative infinity to negative 1. And then 0 to 7. Now, you could have done 0 to 3 and 3 with a bracket, and then 3 to 7. You could have done that. It's the same thing. So, like I said, you could. it's just easier to write it this way. It would be the same thing to write negative infinity to negative 1, and then 0 to 3, and then 3 to 7. That's the same thing. But you can see that value 3 is included. So... This interval right here, these two intervals are equivalent to that interval from 0 to 7. Okay. What about the range of this function? The range is the only time you're allowed to travel on what axis? Y axis. Are there Y values down here? There are. What does this line do? It goes forever. So my, my range starts at negative infinity. So this blue line, I'm getting values from the blue line, the green line, the red line. I get up to here. That's where this sign stops, but how far do I go to I see, keep seeing range values until I get to where? 5. So the range is what? Negative infinity to 5. So the range the range is from negative infinity to 5. What goes around the 5? Bracket, because it was a closed circle. Okay. So this is these are the kind of details that trick people up. Uh, on on these problems. 
Okay, two more volunteers. Well, no, here's the deal. Um, Will and Spencer, who do you think should volunteer next? Slade and Max. There we go. Look at that. Isn't it nice to be loved? <laughs> so we are graphing this function right here. This one has how many pieces? Five, Five pieces. Okay. No trouble. Okay. So what does it mean? So this function is called GPA of X. Why do you think it's called GPA? That's what this is. This is what your GPA function looks like. Okay, so what does it mean a function equal a number? Like y equal a number? What kind of line is that? This was not a trick question, but it turned out to be. Yeah, y equal a number. What kind of line is that? It's a horizontal line. Okay, like y equal four, y equal five, y equal six. Those are horizontal lines. So this says the first line is. My y value equals 0 from 0 to 60. It does it include 0? Yes. Does it include 60? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're making up all kinds of answers. It doesn't, it doesn't what does this tell you? It does it's not. Greater than, right? So draw, draw the line y equals 0 from 0 to 60. Close dot on 0. That's on that line. So y equals 0. So close dot. <clears throat> From there, which is, we'll take that off so it doesn't. Is it? There we go. So just redo it. Is it off the? Yeah. Let's just set it real quick. Okay, try now. Okay, so from 0 to 60, so open circle at 60. Is it? And just connect those lines. I'm not sure why it's giving us those troubles. Okay, so there we are. Now, what happens at between 60 and 70? Okay, and then 70 to 80? Just tap the anywhere. And then 80, 90, 90, 100. So now, this is called a GPA function. What happens if you make a B, like a normal unweighted GPA? What do you get? Yeah, how many points do you get on your GPA? Three. Come on, you get three. If you make an A, you get how many points on your GPA unweighted? Four. Okay, that's what this GPA function looks like. What's the domain of this function? Yeah, zero to 100. So the domain is zero to 100. Okay, what's the range of this function? So what are people saying the range is? Hold on. Okay, does it include every number between 0 and 4? Okay, what about six? What about 2.3? Yeah. So what is the range? Okay, so it's all these individual values. Yeah, so it's that, or you could just write it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's the range of this function. And it is a function, you can tell. There's no place that I could draw a vertical line and cross the graph more than once. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. 
So that's graphing a couple of piecewise functions. Let's do one more here before we're done, okay? Um, I'll work on this one. So this one has how many pieces? Four pieces, okay? So the first line I need to graph is x minus 2. So I need to graph x minus 2. What is the point that I'm going to pick? I know I'm going to pick negative 2. And then i got to pick a number between negative infinity and negative 2. Yeah, so negative 3 is a good one. So if I plug this in, I get negative 4 and negative 5. So at negative 2, negative 4, what kind of circle? Open. So open circle, negative 2, negative 4. And then negative 3, negative 5. Uh, I'm just going to put a dot there because that tells me this is the line that I'm graphing. From negative infinity up to negative 2. Okay? Now I need to graph negative x minus 1. What two points am I going to use? Yeah, negative 2 and 0. It's a line that I'm graphing between negative 2 and 0. So if I can figure out what happens at those two points, then I connect the dots. So if I put a negative 2 in here, I get uh, 2 minus 1, which is 1. Put a 0 in there, I get negative 1. Okay. Negative 2, 1, what kind of dot is that? Close. Negative 2, 1 is a closed circle. What is 0, negative 1? Open, okay? And then just connect those two dots. And then what is the line f of x equal negative 4? What kind of line is that? Horizontal line. Horizontal line at what? But it's not quite a line. What is it telling me? I'm graphing it from where to where? What does this mean? I'm not graphing it over an interval. I'm graphing it where? It's a dot. All this is saying, when x is 0, y is negative 4. That's the point what? 0, negative 4. That's all that means. When x is 0, y is negative 4. That's all that's saying. Okay. Um, yeah, if, if I'm telling you when this number, x is this, y is this when x is that, that is a closed circle. Okay, and then I need to graph negative 2x plus 4 from 0 to 4. So if I plug in a 0, I get a 4. Plug in a 4, I get a negative 4. Is that right? So I need to graph from 0, 4. What is the point 0, 4? Open, closed. Open, and then what about 4, negative 4? Closed, which is right there. Is that a function? Yeah, so the only trouble, like, okay, vertical line here only touches once. Vertical line here, that's open, open, close, only touches once. So that is a function. And then it's probably asking us some questions about this function. What is f of negative 2? Here's negative 2. What's f of negative 2? It's 1, okay? You look at the graph, f of negative 2 is 1. What is f of 5? It is undefined. There is no value at 5. Okay? f of 5 is undefined. And the other way you can figure this out is f of negative 2. Which of these, which of these things contains negative 2? Which interval contains negative 2? Nope. Second, Second one contains negative 2. Plug a negative 2 in there, and you get 2 minus 1, which is 1, okay? And then f of 5, there is no interval there that contains 5. That's undefined, okay? Okay, can someone take care of that bottle that I don't hear it again? So, yes, this is a function, okay? So what we need to do now, in the next lesson, we're going to switch gears, and instead of me giving you the definition of the function, and you graphing it, I'm going to give you the graph, and you have to come back with the equation. Okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to switch gears, and what that would mean is I give you this, and you give me what you see up here. Okay? So you need to be comfortable with I give you this definition, you give me this graph, and now we're switching gears to say I give you this graph, and you give me this function definition. So there are a few things we need to make sure some skills are there. Um, this is sort of stuff you should have had in Algebra 1. 
it'd be good to know this stuff just hypothetically if you were taking a PSAT anytime in the next two weeks. It would also be good to know this stuff, okay? Equations of lines, okay? Slope-intercept form. When you look at an equation of a line in slope-intercept form, there are two things you can tell when you look at it. What are they? The slope, slope and the y-intercept. So that's why we call it slope-intercept form. So if you know the slope and the y-intercept, you can create the line. If it's in slope-intercept form, you can look at it and tell that, okay? So it's y equal mx plus b. m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is what you get when you set x equal to 0. So it's a point 0b is the y-intercept. Okay, point slope form. This is a great form of the line if you know two things, which are what? If you know a point and go out on a limb, what's the other one? Slope. slope. Okay, if you know a point and the slope, you can use this equation of the line. So if I know the point x1, y1, and I know the slope is m, then y minus y1 equal m x minus x1. That's the equation of that line. Okay, so you need to be very comfortable with these these skills as we get into the next uh, the next lesson. So let's do a little bit of a warm up review here. There are some links on our Power School page to Khan Academy videos. If some of this is rustier than than you think, and you need to go back and look at it, uh, find the equation of the line passing through these two points. Okay, I'm given two points. Okay. So, do I have the point and the slope? Yes or no? no? No. Do I have the slope and the y-intercept? No. So, I, right now, I can't, as it is, use either equation of the line. But if I know two points, what can I figure out? The slope. Okay. So, the first thing is, if I know two points, the slope is going to be the change in what? Change in y over the change in x. So, I can write this as 4 minus 6 divided by what? Negative 2 minus 3. So that's the change in y divided by change in x. Now, could I have done 6 minus 4? Yeah, but if I do 6 minus 4, the bottom has to be what? 3 minus negative 2. You have to be consistent. So this is what? Negative 2 over negative 5. What is the slope of that line? It's 2 fifths, okay? So now I know the slope. And do I know a point? Yeah, I know two points. So I've got the slope and the point. Which form of the line will I use? It was not a trick question. I know the point and a slope. Which, which version? Point slope. Okay, so point slope form tells me that y minus y1 equal m x minus x1. Okay, which of these points do you want to use? Yeah, so let's just use negative 2, 4. It does not matter. So this is going to be y minus 4 equal, what's the slope? 2 fifths. And then x minus negative 2. That's the equation of that line. Okay. So this, you've done this in a past life, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, we just need to make sure that these are skills that you can you can bring back. Let's find find the equation of the line passing through 0, 6 with a slope of negative 2. Okay? So I know that the slope is negative 2. Okay? What about the point 0, 6? What is that point? Anything special about it? It's the what? Y-intercept. I know that the y-intercept is the point 0, 6. What do you do when you know the slope and you know the y-intercept? What form of the equation? Slope-intercept form. Okay. So I know that y equal mx plus b. So what's the equation of this line? Plus y equal negative 2x plus Guys, what is the y-intercept? 6, okay? So y equal negative 2x plus 6, okay? That's the equation of this line, okay? If this had not been the, the y-intercept, it had been the point 2, 3, 
what form of the line would I use? What form of the equation? If it had been the regular point 2, 3 with a slope of negative 2, what do I do? Point slope form. Okay, so your choices are point slope or slope intercept. Find the equation passing through 3, 7 with a slope of negative 1. So what two pieces of information do I know? I don't know the y-intercept. I know a point and I know the slope. That's begging me to use which form? Point slope. So y minus y1 equal m x minus x1. So the equation of this line is y minus 7 equal negative 1 x minus 3. That's the equation of that line. Okay. Now if I needed to graph this line, what form do I love them in when I graph them? I like them in slope-intercept because I can look at the line and tell the slope and the y-intercept. How would I get this in slope-intercept form? Okay, just solve for y. You know, so, so if you solve for y, that gets you into slope-intercept form. So this is going to be y equals 7 plus, what is this, negative x, and negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. So this tells me y equals negative x plus 10. So if I were to graph this, where's the y-intercept? 0, 10. And then how would I graph a line if I knew that it passed through 0, 10 and had a slope of negative 1? What would I do? You go down 1 and then to the right 1, okay? So that's a, a skill that you'll need for identifying. So let's use that skill, those skills, to figure out the equation of this line. Okay. Um, what's the y-intercept? Yeah, so the y-intercept is the point zero 0,4. Okay. What's the slope of this line? Is it positive slope or negative slope? Negative. It's negative. So to figure out the slope... Here you are on the line, okay? It looks like if I go down one, two, three, four, and then, well, that doesn't quite get it where it, oh, sorry, back up. If I go down one, two, three, and over one, I'm on the line again, right? So one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. So this is a negative three and a positive one. What is this, the slope of this line? It's what? negative 3. So the slope is negative 3. Okay. So what's the equation of this line? Yeah. So y equal negative 3x plus 4. Okay. So once I know the slope and the y-intercept, pretty easy to come back with the equation of the line. Now, this one, I've got the equation of a line, but I'm not looking at the entire line. It looks like it's a piece of a line or a segment, okay? But we can still do the same procedures here, okay? Now, on this one, do I know the y-intercept? Not really. It doesn't look, on this graph, it doesn't go through a point that I know. It's somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2. You can guess it, or you can do what else? Is guessing a good strategy? No. Okay. What points do I know? I know 3, 2, and what? Uh, negative 2, uh, negative 4. I know those points are on the line. One is included with a solid dot and one is not. So if I know these two points, how do I find the slope? All right. Change in y over change in x. So the slope is going to be 2 minus negative 4 over 3 minus negative 2. So this is what, 6 over 5? So the slope is 6 fifths. Now how do I get to the equation of that line? What do I know? I know a point and I know the slope. So equation of this line doesn't matter which point you use. I like if if I've got one that has positive number ones and one that has negative numbers, which one do you think I want to go to? Positive. Less room for mistake. So y minus two equals six fifths. 
x minus 3. That's the equation of this line. Okay. If I needed to get this in slope intercept form, I could just solve for y. So y is equal to 6 fifths x minus what? 18 fifths plus 2. And hopefully you guys love fractions. So this is what y equal 6 fifths x minus 18 over 5 plus, what is that, 10 over 5? That's the way I write 2. So this is y equal 6 fifths x minus 8 fifths. What's the y-intercept? Negative eight fifths. Okay. Slope is six fifths. Okay. Now, one other thing about this one. Let's look at this last one that we just graphed. What's the domain of this function? What's the domain? Negative 2 to 3. What goes around these? Yeah. What is the range of this function? Negative 4 to 2. Bracket and parentheses. And there we go. Okay.